Hello, um, my name is Zane, and I'm going to give you a quick demo of my latest project, uh, Teach Me Anything, or TMA for short. Like Danny said, very recent. I like launched this on Twitter a couple days ago. Um, so anyway, who here has watched the incredible educational math YouTuber 3 Blue one brown Oh, yeah. Yeah? OK, I see some fans. They're amazing, right? Um, don't you wish you could learn everything from Grant and his incredible voice and those beautiful animations? Well, I definitely do. But Grant has more important things to do and is very busy. So, um, and his animation library is actually open source. So I taught an LLM how to do it. Um, let's go straight into a demo. So the Dyson Airwrap is all the rage this season. Um, it's based on something called the Kawanda effect. I don't really know much about what that is. So uh, let's learn from TMA. Oh, we don't have audio. Fluid dynamics. Let's see. Named after Henri Kawanda, it describes how a fluid jet tends to stay attached to a convex surface. This effect is fundamental to many aspects of aerodynamics and fluid behavior. Here's what happens. When a fluid flows along a curved surface, it tends to follow that curve rather than continuing in a straight line. This happens because of a pressure difference that develops between the fluid and the surrounding air, effectively pulling the fluid toward the surface. So the way it works is basically an LLM is generating Manum code from my prompt. Uh, the Manum code ends up being split up scene by scene. And then the Manum code is rendered to a video and streamed via HLS. The hardest part in all of this was definitely getting it to work reliably and quickly. So the first version of this I built in just a day, but the Manum code would only successfully compile like a third of the time. It would make things up. It would take minutes to generate a single video. So to improve the speed and factuality, I actually switched to Gemini with search grounding. And then to improve the latency even more, I came up with this streaming pipeline. So basically, I asked the LLM to generate a sequence of small math animation scenes in this Manum library. And as they're completed, I send them to Modal, which is this like serverless GPU service, um, to render the scenes as they're coming in, which then renders and returns the videos, which I start streaming to the user with HLS. So what we were watching, it was being rendered in real time while we were watching the video. Um, yeah, and then just for a comparison, let's see what learning with this with even the brightest AI is like. So if I go to ChatGPT01, I ask, hey, explain the Kawanda effect. Don't really learn. I learned some like words, but I don't really understand how it's working. So I'm like, OK, but why? OK, cool. The fluid flows near a surface. Can I get like a visual from ChatGPT? Not, not really. It'll just sort of explain the same thing. And then I went to YouTube. I look up the Kwanda effect, click on the first result, and I get this video. Oh, yeah, OK, that was cut short for a reason. Um, but yeah, let's try um, a live demo, shall we? I have to move my tab. OK. So yeah, we can type basically anything in here. Um, all these examples are also live. So one that I wanted to try was um, spectral, oh yeah, this one. And basically, you just hit generate video. This one's cached, spectral so it'll just play immediately. Spectral methods are used to extract meaningful information from spectral data, which is often complex and contains a lot of information. Spectral data measures the reflectance of an object across different wavelengths. Each material has a unique spectral signature that can be used to identify it. Spectral unmixing is the process of decomposing a mixed spectrum into its individual component spectra, which are called end members. The linear mixing model assumes that a mixed spectrum is a linear combination of end member spectra. Here, X represents the mixed spectrum, or represents the abundance fractions, S represents the end member spectra, and E represents the residual error. End member extraction involves identifying the pure spectra present in the mixed data. Mm -hmm. Or we can try, uh, let's see what else is good, the mathematics of music. Let's explore the fascinating relationship between mathematics and music. It turns out that the seemingly abstract world of numbers plays a fundamental role in the creation of beautiful melodies and harmonies. In music, frequency determines the pitch of a note. A higher frequency means a higher pitch, and a lower frequency means a lower pitch. 
We can visualize this with a sine wave where the frequency is the number of cycles per unit of time. Musical intervals, such as octaves, fifths, and fourths, are defined by specific frequency ratios. An octave, for example, has a two to one ratio, meaning one note has twice the frequency of the other. A perfect fifth has a three to two ratio, and a perfect fourth has a four to three ratio. The circle of fifths visually represents the relationships between the 12 notes. This is something I did scale. not know. That's pretty cool. Moving clockwise around the circle, each note is a perfect fifth away from the previous one. This helps musicians understand key relationships and modulate. Okay, and I'm pretty open to any audience requests. Does anyone have a thing they want to learn about? Gravitational lensing. Gravitational lensing is something I just heard, so let's try it. Gravitational lensing. So behind the scenes, you saw what's happening. This went to an LLM. It's planning out the video. Okay. Let's explore gravitational lensing, a fascinating phenomenon where light bends around massive objects in space. This effect is a direct result of Einstein's theory of general relativity, which describes how gravity warps space-time. Massive objects warp the fabric of space-time around them. As light travels through this warped space-time, it follows the curves, causing its path to bend. This bending is what we call gravitational lensing. Here, we see light from a distant source bending around a massive object as it travels toward an observer. The light can take multiple paths, which is why we often see distorted or multiple images of the same source. There are two main types of gravitational lensing, strong and weak. Strong lensing produces highly distorted images, sometimes even multiple images of the same source. Weak lensing causes subtle distortions, which are used to map the distribution of dark matter. Weak lensing causes subtle distortions, which are used to map the distribution of dark matter. Weak lensing oh, causes a bug. <laughs> subtle distortions, which are used to map the distribution of dark matter. Gravitational lensing is a powerful tool in astronomy. It helps us map dark matter, study distant galaxies, and you can download and measure the expansion of you want the universe. Any other requests? Yeah? Cash. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> we out of time? OK. All right. Cool. No problem. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs>